Good morning and um, welcome to my tutorial on how to do some funky black and white stuff, okay? So there's a few different skills going on here and there are a few different ways of doing this but we'll just do it the, this way to make it easy for today. Do you like the fact I've got birds flying around me as well as Steven Spielberg, which is always nice. Okay, let's crack on. So I've got this uh, mediocre picture of me looking rather trendy. Um, so. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it black and white, but with a few little extra effects dropped in there as well. Okay, so the first easy, quick way just to turn something black and white straight away is to take the saturation out. So I'm going to hold Command and U for not unusual. Um, so then you can just see this will pop up here. If you're on a PC, it will be Control and U. So I'm just going to obviously take the saturation out and then bing, it's black and white. Okay, so that's that's pretty easy, isn't it? Uh, now what we're going to do is some, some more exciting stuff. So we've got our layer window over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to press Command and J for jump. Again, Command will be Control on a PC. Okay, and now I've got that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it darker. So I'm going to use curves for this. Curves are really, really good. Uh, a little bit tricky to use sometimes, but they're very, very good. And that is Command and M. The mother on the keyboard. Uh, let me show you where these other things are. If you go to image adjustments, that's where most of the stuff I'm talking about you would find. Um, but shortcuts, because Photoshop is a two handed task. So Command and M, the mother. And then all I'm going to do is this line here. You can put a dot on that line and make it darker or lighter. Darker or lighter. Uh, what you don't want to do is let the uh, let the line hug the outside like this. So when it flat lines against the edge, that's bad. It means you've lost details. You can put extra dots in. You want to try and keep this fairly smooth. You don't want sort of wiggly lines like this where it starts to look absolutely horrendous. Okay, let um, me just ease that off a little bit. Maybe made it a little bit too dark. Um, so we just zoom out so we can see. That's okay, I guess. Let's go with that. Uh, so. And then what I'm going to do, this is where it starts to get really tricky, is I'm going to add a layer mask, all right? So I'll just make my layers thing a bit smaller so you can see. So this is where I'm going to click on this icon here. It's a rectangle with a white, uh, with a circle inside it. Red, white rectangle with a black circle inside it. Click on that. What it does is it adds a mask to your layer. So important things to remember. This is the image, this is the mask, this is the image, this is the mask. If you're editing the image, you want to have a box around there. If you're editing the mask, you want to have it there. What the mask is, is a way of you hiding parts of the picture. Uh, so when it's white, you can see it. If it's black, you can't. So when we're on this mask bit, we can paint on white or black to sort of let that disappear or come back. The great thing is you can bring it back at any point. Okay, let's demonstrate this so we can see how it works. So if I get the brush tool, which is B on the keyboard, brr, uh, and then I'm just going to check my brush situation over here. You generally always want a soft edge brush. So that's a hard edge brush that has sort of like a nasty edge to it. We don't want that. We want a nice and soft edge brush. Okay. And then we want our color picker, which is over here. I will zoom in to show you. Now you might find that you've got different colors in here, okay? Um, but if you just click on this box here, it will default back to black and white. You can swap them around by using this arrow da, 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 or pressing X on the keyboard. Um, so if I just switch this off, I've got white. So I've got the brush tool. I've got white as my foreground color, which means I'm gonna paint white onto this. So if I do this now, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, and that's because my mask is white. So if I press X and swap the colors around, I'm now painting black onto this white mask, which will do this, okay? And so it's gradually puncturing a hole in that top layer. And you can see that in the mask bit just here. You can see the way it's puncturing a hole because the black bit becomes see-through. I've also, just to make this a little bit easier, I've got my opacity at the top turned down. If I had this on 100, one click would just go straight through it, okay? Whereas because I have it in number between 20 and 30, it would take three to four clicks to sort of go all the way through it, which again, just allows you to have more control. So at the moment, I've, what I've done is I've added a vignette around the outside, so darkening at the edges, so it keeps the 
viewer's eyes inside the middle of the screen, which looks quite cool, I think. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that layer so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back over to my layer window. Oh, no more. Click on the background layer, and I'm going to duplicate um, that background layer again. And some of this stuff you don't have to do. I'm just trying to get you in the habit of using some of this stuff. So I've got my original image sitting on top. I'm going to darken it again. Command and M for mother. I'm going to make it darker. Uh, not too much. Don't want to ruin it. I still want some detail in there. That'll do. Okay. And then I'm going to blur it. So that is normal layer. A dark layer that's got a hole in the middle. So it's just making it dark on the outside. And now we've got a blurry layer. I'm going to do the same trick again. So on that layer, I'm going to add a mask. I'm going to go back. I've got B for my brush tool. And I'm going to paint away the middle bit. Okay, and it's gradually building up. So now what we have is, we don't just have a darkening at the edges, but we also have a slightly blurriness at the edges as well. And that's the sort of technique. You can spend more time on it and produce something far better than myself. The really cool thing that you need to remember with these is, these layer masks, when you save your image as a Photoshop file, a PSD, they will still be there when you reopen it. And the great thing about them is, let's say you reopen it and go, oh, I've done it too much, that I want to undo it. All you can do is X, so I'm now painting white back on, and you can paint white back on and undo what you've done. Okay, so I can paint that top layer back white, all the blurs come back, and let's just say, for example, I could now go back to um, black as my foreground color. To make your brush bigger or smaller, by the way, is the brackets to the right of the letter P. So the one next to P makes it smaller. The one next to that makes it bigger. So if I just do sort of this bit just here, I could just have that middle bit that's sharp, should I want to. So it allows you that level of control even after you've saved it. And that is a fire alarm. Luckily, I'm just about finished. Unbelievable. Take care now, bye-bye then.